Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel or my cookie cutter channel as someone put in my comments not nice so we move on to the next witness in the Casey Anthony trial and it's Dr Arpad Vass now this guy is a bit quirky um, but he's fun to watch um, it can get it does get very complicated and I struggle to follow along with some things I tried very hard to get the gist of what he was saying and try to explain it to the best of my ability um, but it is interesting stuff so he works at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Tennessee in forensic anthropology he knows everything there is to know about decomposition um, he's done numerous studies on decomposition um, you know the temperature is the most important in the decomposition process the higher the temperature the quicker the process the lower the temperature the slower the process through numerous investigations tests and the work he's done he says the smell of decomposition is a unique smell he knows the smell of human decomposition is distinguishable from an animal's decomposition and like I've said it's all really interesting and this testimony is two hours long um, and there's a lot and it's way too much for me to type out and report back. There is a nickname for the place he works at and where he carried out all the studies on the decomposing bodies and that is the body farm due to the nature of his work. In 2008 he was contacted by Yuri Melich about something he needed his help with and eventually they sent him some items of evidence which were obviously the air samples. He sent equipment to Orish, Orange County Sheriff's Office for them to be able to take the samples. In one of the samples of the air they tested which was carpet from the car which was put into a tin can chloroform was found now in his studies he found chloroform in the decomposition process but in small amounts they progressed with the testing because the amount of chloroform that he found in this sample was shocking and unusually high they then took the piece of the carpet out of the can put it in a plastic bag and incubated it for two days at body temperature they identified a further 51 chemical components but the main reason for the further testing was to make sure that the chloroform reading was indeed correct because our pad has never seen that amount of chloroform in a sample before they decided not to take the testing any further because the sample they had wouldn't have enough of the chloroform left in it as after all the time the in in the car it had been stored and to the samples being taken and sent to the lab the chloroform was evaporating so the actual amount of chloroform probably was higher than the reading they got because of all the time that passed before he actually got the sample they did take a sample from a control car i think it was a couple of control cars um just to see the difference of a chloroform reading the other further chemicals they were found were consistent with gasoline. In the control sample chloroform was found but nowhere near the amount that was found in the Pontiac Sunfire. Chloroform is found in environmental samples which is normal but obviously in extremely low amounts. They didn't do any further testing that would involve destroying the sample of carpet so they did a laser based test. Um, which our pad wasn't present for. They were testing for any elements that were present in decomposition. Elements of decomposition were found in the laser testing. Calcium was found in high levels in Casey's car compared to the control car, as was all of the ele elements that were found, which are all consistent with decomposition. They then continued to do some chemical extractions from the carpet. Um, they cut off a few of the fibres and put them in, in a solvent called methanol and left, in it, left it overnight. This was done to pick up anything that would be stuck in the carpet or anything that had been missed in the previous tests. 
Um, and what he saw was the presence of butyric acid, which is a volatile fatty acid found in a decomposing body. He says when he received the tin can and opened it, he says his reaction was that he jumped back a foot or two. Um, he says the odour was overwhelmingly and extremely strong. He was shocked that a can of that size could have such a strong odour and he knew the smell was a human decomp smell. Um, the, f the other evidence he was given was a scraping of the wheel well of the car and after testing it, it revealed acidic acid, which is another by byproduct of decomposition and it is also a byproduct of manufacturing chloroform. He tested paper towels, paper napkins. He also did the methanol extraction with these items. The results were a number of fatty acids were present. These particular fatty acids make up grave wax, which is a byproduct of the breakdown of fat, which happens in decomposition. He confirmed that the carpet was the source of the odour. He can find no other plausible explanation of the odour other than there had been a decomposing human body in the trunk of Casey's car. So now we get on with the cross-examination where Byers is trying to totally discredit this witness, um, um, questioning whether he is capable of testifying and he starts with the fact that he isn't a chemist, um, which he's already said he isn't. Now they are arguing over, dat over a database which ARP had done that wasn't turned over the to the defence and whether or not it was Arpad's fault or not um, and now a device that he has said he has had something to do with inventing and whether it, he's done it to make money off of um, and he's saying the goal a buyers is saying the goal of his invention was for the money whereas Arpad he's doing it because he wants to see he wants to help law enforcement basically um i mean you can see his passion in his field um you know so he's inventing something that will help law enforcement not it's not about the money so Byers has moved on to the procedures in his lab um because his lab is just research and not a forensic lab. Um, it's trying to find out if proper procedures were followed to avoid cross-examination. Um, Arpad hadn't written down the procedures he had followed, although his um, co-worker, Dr. Weiss, or Weiss did. Um, Byers brings up that shortly after his findings, the media became aware of it and it was released to the public. Um, Arpad had received an email from Vincent about Michael Vincent about it and Arpad was upset about all the media attention um, without Arpad even finishing his work it was already being discussed publicly. Byers now moves on to Arpad's first two reports. Um, in the first report he noted 54 different chemicals and in the second report it was 51. Um, Arpad says this is because there was some overlap with the chemicals that were also found in gasoline so they had to elim eliminate the duplications. 43 were consistent with decomposition and then it was down to 41 in the second report. In the first report 19 of them replicated gasoline and in the second it was 17 so Arpad is basically saying each report was a process of elimination which is why the numbers were getting lower so the control cars he got were from a junkyard in Tennessee and he says that's because a new carpet in a new car would have been an unfair comparison um, so now we start an argument over how many control cars were used was it two or three um, our pad is definite it was two uh, he doesn't know the history of the vehicles that he used as controls he has never done studies on what is in carpets. He is aware that Blue Star and Febreze had been sprayed in the trunk of the car. He, There are data sheets that he looked up to see what the chemicals were, um, but he did no experience to see how it would interfere with the analysis he did. 
He also found products of marijuana on the paper towels, but they are also arguing of the chemicals he found that could also be found in meat. Um, so some of the chemicals that he found on the paper towels, not only were they marijuana, but also consistent with decomposition, which Byers is saying some of these elements could be found in meat. So Arpad argues that the meat needs to be raw and in certain conditions. So then Bayer says that people use paper towels when cooking, you know, obviously handling raw meat, you wipe your hands. Honestly, it's just hard to keep up with the to in and fro in. This is the first time Arpad has ever given a testi testimony such as this. Again, not an easy one to be testifying. So Arpad has said, to a newspaper that a decomposing potato smelled like a decomposing body. When Arpad is questioned about this, he says, yes, but the chemical structures are different. And honestly, it sounds like Baez is trying to make Arpad sounds like some sort of crazy scientist, which yes, he's quirky but he's passionate and he knows what he's talking about. So we go on to the redirect and the reason why Arpad got the control cards from a junkyard was because he wanted to find the most contaminated, contaminated cars he could. Before they use any chemicals in the lab, they must consult with the chemical data sheets. Neither Blue Star or Febreze contained chloroform. So that clears that up. So the raw meat and paper towel argument, it would have to be a pound of raw hamburger meat with a high fat content wrapped and sealed. So they move on to another case that um, he was able to, found, to find and unfortunately it was a case in Montana. It was where a three year old child was decomposing in a trunk and wrapped in a blanket and the compound results for this case were the same apart from the levels of chloroform. Um, yeah, so really interesting testimony, a very, very long one, but interesting all the same. Um, so I'll be back with more as you know in the next video so until then bye for now